All right, uh, in today's lesson, we are going to continue our study of exponential functions and their transformations. All right, in other words, if we look at the parent function, uh, b to the x power, uh, that's your basic exponential function, so we call it the parent function. Uh, we want to learn what happens when we make certain changes like these. What happens if we um, add or subtract something to the exponent? What happens when we add or subtract a number at the very end? What happens when we multiply by a number in the front? So in other words, what will be the effect of a, h, and k on the parent function? And these changes are called transformations. Now, in a nutshell, we learned that um, anything being added or subtracted in the exponent here will be a left-right shift. Um, anything that's being added uh, or subtracted on the end is an up or down shift. Now, we learned that specifically, um, these left-right shifts work sort of the opposite of what you would think. So if it's a number being subtracted, that's actually a shift to the right. And uh, if this was something being added, then it would be to the left. Um, but the number on the end works just like you would think. So plus 7 will move the graph up 7. Minus 7 would move it down 7. Now the new thing is this a value. And uh, what we're learning is that uh, this number in the front, um, if it's bigger than 1, um, that's going to cause a vertical stretch. All right. In other words, the graph will be taller than it was before. Um, if this number is less than one, like one third or one half or something like that, that's going to cause a vertical compression where the graph is shorter uh, than it was before. If you look at the same set of points. And um, well, one more thing, if it's negative, it'll be a reflection. I guess it'll be easier if we look at actual problems. All right, anyway, for now, okay, uh, for problem number one, I'm just asking if the function is increasing or decreasing, and then give the end behavior. So um, what I think would be best for you guys if basically you should make a little sketch, all right? Now, um, looking at the base, since the base is six, you know this is going to be increasing. All right, so if I make a, just a tiny little sketch right here, all right, um, I know this is going to be increasing. Um, I know the asymptote is zero because there's nothing being added on and it's increasing. So this is a tiny little sketch of what's happening. So my, uh, so I'm going to say this is increasing. And then as far as the end behavior, um, whoops. So on the left, the graph is approaching the asymptote, which is zero. On the right, the graph is rising forever, so that's approaching infinity. So that's why this will be our end behavior. Okay, so this, uh, as x approaches negative infinity, that's the left side f of x approaches 0. As x approaches positive infinity, that's the right-hand side, f of x approaches infinity. All right, same type of thing for number 2. Uh, and for each of these problems, I'm just going to do a quick sketch. All right, so for this problem, here's my quick sketch. Now, looking at the 2 thirds, this is less than 1. Um, so I know this is going to be a decreasing graph. All right, um, so it's going to be doing this type of a thing. All right, there's no number being added on, so I know that this is going to be um, the uh, x-axis is still the horizontal asymptote. Now, this two in the front would be a vertical stretch, but that is not going to affect whether it's increasing or decreasing, and it does not affect the end behavior. Okay, so this graph is decreasing as we knew it would and um, on the left the graph goes up to infinity on the right 
the graph approaches the asymptote, which is zero. So there's your end behavior. All right, let's look at number three. Looking at problem number three, first I do my quick sketch. All right, oh man, I keep missing this thing somehow. Okay, now we have to be very careful with this because of the uh, negative sign in front. Now look, um, imagine that this negative sign wasn't there. Um, this is a decreasing graph because it's uh, one fourth is less than one. So we would uh, expect the graph to be doing this type of thing, decreasing, decreasing. Okay, that's what it would be like without the negative sign. Um, now, with the negative sign, that uh, causes a reflection over the x-axis. So the actual graph is going to be upside down from here, like this. Okay, so see how it's like the mirror image? You have to reflect it over the x-axis when it's negative. So the graph we're going to deal with is this graph. So watch out for the negative sign. So now we can go ahead and, and do this thing. Um, let's see what we got. Okay, um, this graph is decreasing, okay, because you see the um, one-fourth power, and uh, not power, the base is one-fourth. Um, now, on the left, okay, and this is sort of new, um, but as we go to the left, the graph gets lower and lower and lower. Maybe I should draw the rest of it in. The graph is doing like this. So on the left, we're actually going towards negative infinity now because it's upside down. So let's get in there and make that a negative infinity. Okay, now as we go to the right, the graph is still approaching zero. So that's still good. But this is actually gonna be a negative infinity. All right? I don't think we've ever seen that before. So that's new. Okay, similarly, um, same type of thing on these. So look at number four. Let's do a quick sketch. All right, don't have a lot of space, but I'll just do it over here. So quick sketch for number four. Um, it's only a little bit bigger than one, but it is bigger than one. Um, also, the asymptote is at six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm expecting to have an asymptote up here okay at six and I'm expecting this to be increasing because this is bigger than one so it should be doing this type of thing alright so increasing asymptote at six so with that in mind just kind of bring this down alright now the graph is increasing because the base is bigger than one so that part is fine now on the left, the graph is approaching the asymptote as we go to the left. So it is approaching six. Um, so the left end behavior should be um, at six. Now um, on the right, as we go to the right, the graph goes up into the sky. So the right end behavior is good just like it is, positive infinity. Okay. All right, now let's do number five. Um, all right, I'm just gonna need a little space for myself. Let me block this out for a second. I just need somewhere to write. So here comes my little graph. Oh, okay, look, you gotta be careful on, on this one, okay? When you have a negative um, exponent. What you want to do is uh, do the reciprocal and before you do the problem. So before you do this problem at all, um, what you want to do is do this. So we have f of x equals 100. Okay, now I want to, I want to do the reciprocal. So this is like 1 over 0.77. Obviously I'm not going to leave it like that, okay? I need to find out what this number is. 
but this is how you do the reciprocal and make it positive. So this would be f of x equals 100 times something. So now you will not have access to a TI-30 excess multi-view, um, but you can use a basic four function calculator. So let's just pretend that this is a four function calculator. So you could just do one divided by 0.77. Okay, so that gives me 1.29, blah, blah, blah. It's about 1.3. Okay, so this is about 1.3-ish. Okay, so clearly this is bigger than one. So as I do my, uh, my sketch, um, I'm gonna draw a graph that is increasing and uh, there's no number being added on the end or subtracted so the asymptote is still zero okay y equals zero and this is an increasing graph so I would expect it to be doing like this okay so that's the graph that we are working with um, so let me once again copy off myself All right, as I bring this on in here, kabam. Um, yeah, like we said, this is gonna be increasing. On the left, the graph is in, in fact approaching zero. So there you go. As we go to the right, it is going up into the sky. So that should be infinity. So that is good. Okay. I'm temporarily covering up number five to give myself a little space to draw. Um, let's see. Once again, we have a negative exponent. Anytime you have a negative exponent, I want you to rewrite the problem before you do anything else. So this would be f of x equals 0 0.00001. All right. Now, this um, 2 to the uh, negative x power. I will do the reciprocal and make it a positive x. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. So this is what we are really going to sketch. Um, so here's my rough sketch. The asymptote. There's nothing being added on or subtracted, so uh, the asymptote is still going to be at 0. Um, this is definitely less than 1. So this will definitely be a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Um, this number in the front has nothing to do with it being increasing or decreasing. The one half though, it'll be decreasing because this is less than one. All right, so my graph will be decreasing, but not because of the point zero, 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 0001, because of the one half, okay? Really, uh, for these problems, we're ignoring the a value. We're ignoring the number in the front. Oh, except for if it's reflected over the x. If it's negative, we have to flip it upside down. So going by this, we will answer the question. So this is decreasing. Okay, um, so let me copy one of my decreasing ones. Make my life easier. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's decreasing, like we said it would be. Um, <clears throat> on the left, the graph is approaching infinity, because as we go left, it goes into the sky. On the right, it is approaching the asymptote of zero. So this would be your answer for number six. Okay. We need to describe all of these transformations um, based on the parent function e to the x power. There are two transformations. One is uh, whatever the 3 is doing, and the other is whatever the 7 is doing. Now what the 3 is doing, the a value there, is going to be a vertical stretch. So specifically we would say uh, it's being vertically stretched by a factor of 3. Okay, and the seven, of course, is shifting the graph up seven.
Okay, so vertically stretched by a factor of three and shifted up seven. Similarly, all right, looking at number eight, we have two transformations again. We have this negative sign and then we have the plus four in the exponent. A negative in the front is going to cause a reflection over the x-axis. So um, reflect over the x-axis. And uh, the other transformation, remember in the exponent, these are left-right shifts. And uh, positive will actually send us to the left four. So these would be your two transformations for number eight. Um, looking at number nine, I see three transformations. Um, because of this two-fifths in the front, um, this is going to be uh, either a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. If this is bigger than one, it'll be a vertical stretch, all right? meaning the graph would get taller. If it's less than one, it will be a compression, meaning it's being squished down. Um, this is less than one, so this would be a vertical compression. This minus two is going to be a shift to the right two and this minus four will be down four. So, so this is how you would describe those three transformations. Okay, let's take a look at number 10. All right, now, before you do the problem, you need to rewrite it in the other form, okay? Um, and, um, yeah, so this negative x, just please understand that what this really is doing is um, this is like having f of x equals 1.5 times 1 over e, okay, to the positive x power minus 3. Okay, so this is not really a transformation, all right? This would be a, um, a decreasing function. But the only transformations are going to be your, um, your a value and your k value, all right? There is no h value. Um, so this is going to be a vertical stretch because the 1.5 is bigger than 1, and it will be down 3, shift down 3. So there you have it, vertically stretched by a factor of 1.5 and shift down 3. Those are the two transformations. Okay, let's look at number 11. All right, I see my two transformations here. It's gonna be a shift left one, it's always kind of the opposite there, and down 12. So there's number 11. All right, number 12. There are four transformations happening here, four. All right, there's this negative sign which is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Um, there is the one-fourth, which is going to be a vertical compression by a factor of four. Um, there is the, mm -hmm. there's the plus eight, which is a shift left eight. And then there is the plus five, which is a shift up five. So please be aware there are four um, transformations that you must list. All right, and here's all that just written down. Please understand that uh, it's a vertic it's vertically uh, compressed because this um, uh, because this a value is less than one. If this had been bigger than one, it would have been a stretch.